Welcome everybody to the uh, community meetup. My name is Maria Cruz. I'm a program manager in the Google Open Source Program Office. And today we are uh, going to go over a few topics. Uh, I linked the agenda on the chat. If you're just coming in and you cannot see it, other people can link to it again. Um, and I think we're going to go ahead and get started. I, Thomas is the first presenter with an update from the steering committee. So Thomas, the floor is yours. Thank you, thank you. Okay, uh, welcome everyone and, and uh, thank you for joining our community meeting. Um, and thank you Maria for organizing these of course. Uh, I'm excited to see all of the content we're gonna talk about today. And of course, extra excited to uh, talk about the TOC election. Uh, in this election, we're gonna, in this election, we have uh, voted for three of the five TOC seats. And uh, the two remaining seats are uh, part of the bootstrap committee and they will be uh, voted for next year. Um, our most active community, community members are eligible to vote. So we had 117, uh, people eligible eligible to vote and 83 of them voted. It was great. Thank you all the voters for voting and to make sure that we get a great TOC. And the new TOC is drumroll, uh, Nia, Marcus, and Grant are our new TOC members. Uh, I'm super thrilled to see these three getting elected. Uh, they have been part of the project for a long time, uh, and I feel like they really model the values of what we want to see from the TOC. Um, I also want to thank, thank our existing members who are staying on. So thank you, Matt and Evan. Uh, looking forward to seeing you in the TOC meeting this afternoon. Uh, and then I don't know, I don't know if Vile is on the call, but uh, I also want to thank Vile for the two and a half years plus that he has spent uh, leading this project. And, and I'm uh, really, really thankful for all his time he spent on the TOC. So. Um, with that, I'm going to let Nia introduce himself and, and then Marcus and Grant after that. Hello, everyone. Uh, I'm Nia. I'm, <clears throat> I'm very honored to receive the support in the election. Uh, I have been involved with candidate in the very early days. And uh, in the last two years, I have been leading the networking work group. <clears throat> My hope uh, in joining the TAC, TOC is that I can help increase collaboration in the project as well as help improve the candidate user experience. Hopefully that would lead to even wider adoption than the early success that we have now. Thank you, everyone. Right, Thanks. Uh, oh, Marcus. All right. Um, thanks, everybody, for uh, the support. I am truly humbled to be, uh, to be like, quote unquote, winning uh, one of the election seats uh, in, a, in a community vote. My name is Marcus. I'm based out of Germany. I might be the only member of the new TUC who is not living in Seattle. So that's, uh, that's interesting. I know where Grant lives, but uh, the others do, I think. Um, I've been working on full-time on Canadians since back when it was non-public and still called Elafros. I don't know if you guys remember that. Um, before that, I already worked on functional as a service in the Apache OpenWhisk project. And outside of coding, uh, I'm a guitarist in a metalcore band, a bass singer in a choir, and a voluntary firefighter. When I wrote that down, I found it interesting because it's kind of broad. Uh, open source is very dear to my heart. So uh, first and foremost, I want to ensure as an EA that the Canadian community stays the well oiled machine it is today. And one, my top priorities are ensuring a healthy community, enabling innovative approaches, and making room for constructive uh, discussion. Thanks, everybody. I think I saw Grant on the call somewhere. Yep, here I am. Yep, here I am. Uh, hi, everybody. Um, uh, I'm Grant, uh, I've been on Knative since the, the very early days of the project. I started with serving, uh, and then I transitioned to eventing, where I'm currently a working group lead. Uh, let's see, I've, um, I work at Google right now uh, in Seattle, uh, but uh, before that, I worked at uh, GitHub, 
uh, mostly on search. Uh, so you can blame me for all the times that code search fails you. Uh, uh, but anyway, the reason I mentioned GitHub is because um, one of my projects there was building an event processing platform to run on Kubernetes. Uh, and at the time, we had to build a lot of stuff ourselves. Um, publisher, libraries, uh, an event envelope format. Um, that was surprisingly hard. Uh, schema registry, auto scaling. Um, it was a big job. Uh, and it always felt like this was something that could apply to more than just my use case. Aren't other companies having this need too? Um, and so in, in retrospect, obviously what I needed was uh, something like uh, Knative. Um, I think that experience of needing this set of tools that we're building gives me some insight into how those tools could best serve the needs of our users. Um, and I hope to use that to build the right tools for them. Um, like Nia and uh, Marcus, I'm also um, pretty passionate about keeping the community healthy. Um, I think without the healthy community, uh, all the code that we wrote um, doesn't mean all that much. Um, so thanks, everyone, for trusting me with the oversight of this project. It's, uh, it's really an honor, and I'm humbled and uh, excited to get started. Thanks, everyone. And I'm looking forward to see all three of you uh, this afternoon in the TOC meeting. Um, and Maria, that's it for me. Back to the scheduled programming. Awesome. Um, I, I think we got everybody from the Google Meet uh, link. And I'm still admitting a few participants. Uh, next up is uh, updates from working groups. Uh, uh, first one is auto scaling. Uh, I think it's Marcus as well. Right, that should be me. Yes. I forgot to mention earlier that I'm also leading the auto scaling working group. So there we go. Now we have that covered as well. <laughs> um, yeah, regarding auto scaling, I just wanted to give uh, a quick heads up that we improved already a lot of our docs and are still in the process of adding more information and like more docs more docs always helps um, and i would really love to get feedback from actual users on if they if these docs cover what you need or if you need more and if you need more uh, please tell us what what that is we also did vast improvements in the way our load balancing works uh, that's currently on um, unreleased, it will all be in 0.15. Um, so looking forward to releasing that and seeing uh, how it helps you. As, it will especially help on uh, running low container concurrency values. And last but not least, we are currently preparing a questionnaire for you, for the users basically. We are not yet finished with that, but um, see this as a general call to action. Um, we have a lot of discussions in the auto scaling working group where we desperately need more user data and need to know how users are using things, um, what you need, what do you find hard, which knobs do you find yourself tuning and where do you find yourself relying on defaults and are you actually pretty happy with that? So while we don't have the questionnaire out, please feel free to reach out to me directly if you need to if you can't put stuff uh, publicly uh, or open GitHub issues, if you do have issues or open a thread on Canadian users and please tell us how you're using stuff, what, what are your pain points so we can make, like uh, inform our decisions better in terms of twitching with all the default values that we have and exposing more values, stuff like that. Thanks. Thank you, Marcus. Uh Next, we have updates from eventing working group, and I didn't see who added those, but it was me. You can speak um, up, yes. Yeah, no. um, it's just a little update that was come up yesterday in the uh, actual working group meeting. So um, we now have two different kind of uh, brokers that are channel based. There's the single channel broker and the multi channel broker, and for the next upcoming release, the 015. Um, we are going to deprecate the single tenant one, and with the 016, we are actually uh, removing the uh, single tenant one. 
And since this may have some impact and we have captured some like uh, action items and, and issues that are all needed to kind of support this along, uh, we as the eventing group yesterday decided to give this uh, larger visibility in the community meeting uh, for like all of the users and not just those that regularly attend the working group meeting. So there is a GitHub issue that I linked in the document, which has some action items and the first pull request, I guess, um, where you can all, I guess, party on and give feedback and comments and whatnot. And the summary is this makes life easier, but yeah, heads up <laughs> and visibility for, for all of the users base. That's it. Thank you. Thank you, Matt. Uh, and I forgot to mention there's a survey uh, for this event. So if you have feedback and this feedback comes up throughout the event, please feel free to share that on the survey. The, the link is on the agenda. Um, and next up is Evan with a demo, automating service delivery with bindings. Let's see, just a moment. Let me get my screen share going. Uh, here we go. Okay. Um, so this is just a little application that I hacked together. Um, that show that um, does a lookup in the di in the dictionary using dictionary APIs. Um. <laughs> and let's see. So um, if you want to, you can look at it. But um, I basically I've got it running locally. Uh, I had it running locally. So um, it's just a little Go application and you can load it and define a word. So banana and it will go to, um, there's a couple different sources it'll pull from, but it prefers the Oxford English Dictionary. So here's some definitions for banana. Um, which is all well and good. And, you know, if I decide, you know, oh, maybe um, I should say style gg color green. And let's see if I remember how to do that correctly. And if we reload, uh, we should, yeah, okay. So I don't remember how to do inline styles. This is not about how I know or don't know how to do HTML because clearly I don't. Um, but so, you know, my local development loop is pretty quick, um, you know, just kill it and restart it. Um, but then if I want to go and actually run this on Knative, um, you know, I, I don't know. Can people read that? Does it need to be a little bigger? I think a little bit. Maybe bigger. bump it up a tick. Oops, that's too many ticks. Um, you know, I have this wonderful bit of gobbledygook that is a two-phase Docker file. Um, if I want to actually build this stuff, and then um, let's see, and then I can do a Docker build, um, and you know, you've all seen this, and it take some time. Um, you know, I'm, I happen to be using Go, but, um, you know, there's lots of different languages and almost all of our stuff, unless you're using Co, kind of looks like this. Um, and what's even better is now if I want to push this, I realize, oh, wait, I forgot to tag it. So, um, uh, Okay, and then I have to Docker push it. Um, and it takes some more time. And basically, you know, this iteration cycle 
you know, kind of works, but kind of annoying. Um, and then I have to go into my YAML. You found the bunny alarm? No. Oh. I will, I will be finding a bunny later. Um, but, uh, you know, now if I want to go in and actually, you know, update something, I then have to run, you know, KN service update, um, define image is whatever thing I got here. And then it turns and does its thing and um, eventually it will show up here. Um, I've been having a few issues with SSL. So in some cases I might fall back to um, and because I didn't remember how to do this. Um, there's my background color. I'm going to start using blink tags instead because those are really obvious. But uh, but you know that's that's sort of your typical workflow. But wouldn't it be great if um, your workflow could look a little bit more um, server side driven? And so I'm going to show you a couple of tools um, that um, were written by. A variety of folks from VMware um, when they were under the Pivotal umbrella. So some of these come from Project Riff and some of these come from KPAC. Um, so first, um, let me show you KPAC. So let's see. So. Um, so this is a image, which is a um, KPAC construct that lets you do cloud native builds. So I can make this a little bigger for you all. And when I create this image YAML, um, it will, let's see, is it done? It's done. Um, I'm also going to show off Octant. Um, for those of you who haven't seen it, it's kind of a nice UI on these things. So I just created an image. And right now, it's not ready yet, um, but it will create a build um, each time that things change. And you can see that the build is currently progressing. Um, we'll leave that back there doing its thing. And we'll look at what's actually in an image. So an image defines a source. Um, I've just pointed it at GitHub and um, master branch. And a builder, which gives you a set of build packs. Um, this will actually build a lot of different languages. Um, this is this default kpack one. And um, uh, cluster. So here is the cluster builder, and you can see, um, oh, that's the definition of cluster builder. Um, I always forget when I'm looking in Octant, you have to load the object um, and then the YAML. But you can see there's build packs for Node and Go and .NET and a lot of other things. And so this will, using cloud native build packs, um, auto detect which language you're building and running, and then go and build a container. So probably if we come back here and we look at our images, we'll see that there's a latest image now, um, which is the, last the most recent image that's been built. Um, so that's great. Um, I can go and uh, we'll note that this starts with 4AE. I can go and make a change over here. Um, let's see. I said I was going to do blink. So let's see. Blink, save it. And 
blink more. Yes. Uh, yes. Do all the saves. Push this up. And in a minute or so, we'll see um, another build kickoff. Another way you can watch that is with cube control get build dash w is just a watch on builds. So you can see right now we have the one build that was created at the beginning of time, but we'll pretty soon see another build kick off um, as the image notices that there's been a commit. And these are various stages of the build making progress. And so it keeps updating the status. Um, the only piece that really matters here is whether it succeeds or not and what the image is. But um, each time it gets updated along the way, um, the watch will report new information. So this will go for a moment or two. And then at the end, we will have a new image. Um, and let's look a little bit at this image again. Um, this is the one we want. So if we look at build define here, the YAML status has this field latest image. And um, if you all are familiar with duct typing, you may know where this is headed. Uh, anything that has a latest image, um, you, know, you can see our build has finished and the latest image has been updated to build two. Um, our friends in Project Riff have created a um, created a duct typed controller. Um, lost already. Uh, that is called an image binding, and it lets you connect an object that has a status with the latest image to a resource that should be updated. Um, so right now I can push builds to GitHub and within a minute or so I get a Docker image built, um, not on my local machine, but off in the cloud somewhere. Um, if I also apply this binding YAML, um, Um, now, this, every time the image is updated, um, the user container inside the service should also get updated. Um, and this works not just for services, but it also works for deployments. So, um, we'll create that as well. And then we can check and they're both ready to go. So now I should be able to um, forget how to do anything else annoying here. Uh, they get bold. What? They get bold. Bold. Save. And if I'm super smart, I would actually check and see um, that stuff builds locally. It does. Okay. Yeah, do the stuff. I still need to figure out the one click, you know, commit and push thing in Visual Studio Code. Um, I'm sure there's a way to do it. But now over here, we can look and see our builds are 
still kicking off and running. And so let's see. Let's watch those. Um, so yeah, this is, some of this is early prototype code. Some of this is semi-production code. Um, none of it who's hooked up with eventing. So there's no, um, there's no registration of a webhook or anything like that to kick the build process. It's just doing a poll on GitHub. Um, but GitHub can deal with some polling. So, um, and here we go, it's kicked off. And let's see, while we're waiting, let's take a look at that service. So if we look at this service, and it's YAML. Um, somewhere I have an image specified here. And when this is done, the controller should move things over. Um, the other fun thing is one build, since we have two, um, since we have two image bindings, we can apply the same thing that we built to both of them, um, which is less interesting if it's a web application like this. But if it's a sidecar, you could potentially push a whole bunch of different sidecars at the same time. Uh, let's see. We just built something that is an E2. Oh, look. Um, it's already updated on the deployment. Let's go look at the service. And of course, I'm doing a live demo, so the service didn't get updated here. Uh, well, the deployment got updated. Um, I would I would have to dig around to figure out why the service didn't, unless somebody on the call has seen this before. Uh, I would expect this to just get updated. Um, well, the other thing, of course, is so you can see all the pods that I've got running on the cluster. And this binding system is where that binding happens. So. If you folks hadn't seen this already, whoa. Um, let me run that command for you again. Um, you can specify a deployment rather than needing to specify a specific pod, um, which is pretty handy when you've got, you know, really long deployment names, um, like in Kinetive. And whoa, what's this? So that's a webhook. Uh, reconcile succeeded. Um, the the initial binding uh, probably should have replaced the new tag as well. Oh, I'm guessing it never uh, kicked in for that. Um, Oh, well, that's not a useful patch is a set of bytes. <laughs> I'm afraid I can't read that um, on the fly. Um, too old. Reason. The text is right below the, the hex. Oh.
This, I'm not sure this is the same thing as the patch. I think it's was recently fixed. Okay. Um, yeah, I have a slightly older version of the code, so maybe that is a sign that I should fix that. Um, but uh, let me show you where these things actually live in case you're curious. Um, let's see, this. Uh, so this is the um, define app. It's only interesting in so much as if you want to reproduce what I was doing. Um, so this is Pivotal KPAC. Um, this is an integration with cloud native build packs that does builds on the server side. Um, and that provides you that image resource. And image bindings come from this project riff bindings. Um, and they have some nice documentation down here that shows you what to do with them and all the different values you need to put in. Uh, but yeah, um, the exciting thing about image binding is that it should work not just with KPAC, but with anything else that exposes a spec.latest image. Um, so theoretically, you could query a Docker registry and find you know, the last version of a given tag if you wanted um, and have that auto bump um, using image binding to resolve it down to a specific reference. Um, or you could um, say, hey, this is my external store of past end-to-end -end tests or you know, past QA runs. Once something passes QA, then it can actually get rolled out to the next stage of production. Um, so I thought that was kind of neat. Um, not my work, but happy to show it off. Awesome. Thank you so much, um, Evan, for the demo. Uh, now we have allotted some time to discuss this. Ideally, we would be doing this on individual rooms, uh, but we were not able to enable that for this meeting. So we can open the floor uh, to discuss now or ha you know, share any comments or ideas that this may have inspired you or questions. There was a lot of activity in the chat during the demo. So if anybody would like to uh, speak up, now would be the time. Hello, it is uh, Alec. Um, just a quick question about the binding. What are you changing on the image in the deployment or something else or? Um, that's changing just image. Um, in particular, it's changing the image associated with the container name inside spec.template. You mentioned some other tools that you were planning to use. What could be changed to make it, I don't know, faster to pick up the changes or? Oh, um, if you connected um, the GitHub event source um, and used that to poke the image, um, that would cause the reconciler to kick off and decide to you know go and check and see if there's anything there and oh look there is um, which would let you reduce the polling interval um, it would look like webhook to um, something running on the cluster you know to the, the source um, which would poke the the uh, build controller and then would kick off a build that way and in theory you could bypass github right you could just send somehow what you modified either from your docker local or just change and build it in your cluster right yeah um and uh kpac actually supports several different kinds of sources um i use the github one because it's easy and doesn't require a lot of setup um but uh if people want to see i can show 
what the other sources that KPAC can use are. Let's see. So, they have these source types and so a source can be a get or a blob or you can actually pull from a registry and they all, you can take a subpath. So you can say, not this whole git repo, but like some subpath of the repo or, um, you know, not this whole tarball, but like this subpath build from there. So you can see Git has URL and revision. Um, blob is just a URL. And a registry, um, you can pull down an image. Um, so you can package your, your source code into an image, put it in your Docker registry, um, and then pull it from there. And you know, obviously, you'd need to get into the KPAC source to extend this further, but it would be doable. Um, if you move to something like Tecton, the fetch the source is actually a separate piece. And so um, you that's probably more easily pluggable. The listen for changes is a little bit harder with Tecton, which is why I chose KPAC right now for the demo. Thank you. Uh, I think S. Nichols has a raised hand. Hey, Ali, this is no? Scott. Um, Hey, Evan, I was wondering if you could compare and contrast this with uh, Tecton. You kind of started. Um, so KPAC is, um, is very focused on basically building a single Docker image from a single repo. Um, Tecton is basically a full-featured workflow system. So um, if you want to, you know, use multiple repos or you want to deliver multiple artifacts to different places or you want to do something more than just build your software um you know if you have a more involved testing process for example um you'll find that kpac will run out of steam fairly quickly um but it works really well for the simple case of i have some code and i just want to turn it into a docker image um whereas tecton because it's got so many more capabilities you're greeted with, um, you know, okay, figure out what you want to do and how to describe that in a bunch of YAML documents. Um, whereas, you know, there were like three or four things I had to like intentionally write for the KPAC configuration, but it's pretty minimal. Um, if you look, if you look at their tutorial, um, basically you create a secret, you create a service account, and then you create your image. Um, and you're done. And it sounds like they might be able to join up or something. Um, they both use cloud native, they both could use cloud native build packs. Um, that's a common tooling um, that KPAC is leveraging. Mm -hmm. um, Tecton can plug into something that can build cloud native build packs. Um, Tecton itself is decoupled from any particular build process. So if you really want to use Tecton to deliver your mobile apps, it's a good tool for that too, I guess. Cool. Thanks. Any other questions, comments? Oh, I forgot to show one other cool thing that Octant will do. So maybe um, I will show that as well, just so that, um, you know, it's look at all the cool tools that we already have because we're part of the Kubernetes ecosystem time. Um, so one neat thing about Octant um, is that you can actually um, go in and look at a pod. And if it knows what's going on, you can start a port forward from the UI, um, which is kind of slick. 
and you can see all the events and stuff that were related to it. So I've been trying to train myself to actually use the pretty UIs rather than just do everything from the command line and then curse when it doesn't work well. Um, so you can see now um, blink is no longer actually a valid tag. So, so much for my making things really ugly. But the blink tags are in there. don't need to port forward anymore. Um, the other thing is that Octan, if you look at it, um, is running off of localhost. So it uses your local cube config um, and basically runs as you rather than being something that runs in the cluster and you have to figure out how to access control it. Cool. I think if there are more comments or questions. We can uh, wrap up this meetup. Thank you, everybody, for joining. Uh, don't forget to. Actually, I had one other thing. Oh. Um, yes. Go ahead. Since this is a meetup, um, it, I know we can't have everybody all, you know, jump in at once with with what's on their mind, but um, are there non-demo related Knative questions that people are curious about? And if not, we can wrap it up. Yeah, um, hi, uh, I'm Murugappan. Um, my question was like on Knative, I was like uh, interested to know about how that image caching works. I've seen the uh, custom resource called image caching, but I was not sure of like uh, how it works. Um, it's an extension point that folks can hook into. Um, I can share a POC that hooks into it if you're interested, but upstream we don't have anything that actually implements that. Okay. Yeah, I'll be interested in the POC to see what. Thanks. It, it may actually be interesting uh, as the uh, as the sort of guidance around uh, the Knative bike shed repo uh, becomes clear to actually move a POC there. Um, I, that's something I should think about. Okay, thank you. If folks have something to talk about, share about for the future meetings, demos and everything else, what's the best way to uh, yeah. show up? Uh, there is a Google form. Um, I can mail around, mail that to the group afterwards as a follow up. Um, so if you're interested, fill out that form. Um, it feeds into a spreadsheet. Both of those are in the Google Drive. Um, and uh, I think Maria will be picking from that um, when we have our next meeting. Yeah. Uh, I can actually. We can pull up the form real quick right now. Since we have so many people on the call, maybe we want to shout out to Hack Her Days. If you want to come hack on code with us, join the Slack. There's there's a room and we'll uh, make wacky stuff together. It's super fun. When does it happen? Oh, for, sorry. Fri all Friday. All day Friday, every Friday. Uh, okay, just uh, shared it. Yeah. <laughs> I just shared the link to sign up for a demo uh, on a form. Um, and I happen to show off a bunch of stuff from VMware. Um, I think it, it's cool and it happens to be stuff done by, by my employer. It's totally fine to show off stuff that you've worked on for work. Um, it's also fine to show off cool stuff that you did because it was fun. I showed off cool stuff that someone else did because it was fun. Yes, please sign up. We need more. Uh, we need more demos and more people to present all the cool things that you're doing.
And the next meeting, um, well, we are having less and less people here, but it would be great uh, to get a sense of whether once a month works well for the group um, to have this event, this recurring event. Can we have like a thumbs up? Yeah. Lots of people without cameras, so I don't know. Or like, you can comment on the chat box if once a month it looks good. Thank you, Jax. Marcus, awesome. Bill, UTV. <laughs> okay, class one to once a month. Great. Uh, we're thinking of doing it on the second Thursday, well now maybe Friday, so that it doesn't coincide with other CNCF uh, events that uh, maybe uh, we share a similar audience group with. Uh, so it might be, we might be moving this to Friday morning um, for the second Friday of every month, if that works. Cool. So I think with that, please give us feedback on the survey. Please sign up with a demo. And uh, I think that's it. Any afterthoughts, any comments, or shall we just wrap it up? The survey link is working. Uh, can other people not? Is accepting responses, I go. One response. I didn't catch that. You broke up at the end. It works for me, Maria. Thank you, Brenda. I just pasted it again in case it was, yeah. Yeah, it works for me. I'm going to try again. Okay, cool. Thank you. So, yeah, please uh, give us feedback on the survey so that we can keep improving this meeting. And we'll see you next month.